Hey, Canapreneurs. This week's show is sponsored by Dairy Berry's Recording Studio. Well experienced and will make your show sound great. Take a look at DairyBerry'sRecordingStudio.com. Open up, Colorado. It's 420. Time to grind and burn. This is not your son's stoner show. Welcome back, friends, followers, cannapreneurs. Welcome to the Cannabis Community Project. I am Brainstorm, bringing you your weekly broadcast podcast once again from the CCP Studios high up in Denver, Colorado. Here exploring the business side of this newly emerging Colorado economy, focusing on the business, the patient, the retailer, to the geek in the garage, creating that next innovation in cannabis. This is the first media platform platform to let fellow canopreneurs just like you build sustainable business models while living the lifestyle. Prepare yourself to be educated, not just medicated this week. We sit down with the mad scientist to learn all about the making of fibers and papers from not just hemp products, but marijuana stock. That's right. I made a distinction there. Making fiber and paper out of marijuana stock, not hemp stocks. Are you confused yet? Well, you're going to learn all about it because we sat down with Adam, the mad scientist from his new company, Nine Fiber, to learn about how paper, fiber, and so many other products are made not just from hemp, but from the actual sativa plant itself and some of the other genus. As we learn, there's a whole variety of cannabis out there. It's not just all about smoking and joking there's real industry and real business going on there you know real business just like mike from four strains last week a real business paying taxes producing income employing people yeah you remember that episode right well before we move on to the mad scientist let's step back to last week's short-term memory flashback to four strains talking with mike polk down there across from mile high stadium learning about the updated version of memberships smoking lounges caregivers head shops growing mediums and so much more we had a full pack episode last week so if you didn't hear it go back and take a listen right after you listen to these couple minutes just to remind us all what we learned and then we'll move on and listen to the mad scientist this week here we go topic we're talking about today or maybe we could talk about a couple different topics the fundamentals of being a business owner and running a business we could talk uh, a little bit about about the lifestyle of how to balance being a business and personal life yeah it's really tough sometimes man how's business it's okay okay yeah, I mean... The it, doors are still open. Yeah. <laughs> are you still running the main the promotion of yep. buy $30 Absolutely. or more in the head shop and get a friendly gift? Of- that also uh, includes the hookah lounge as well. You can spend $30 on either side and you'll still receive the three grand gift. We're uh, an adult establishment, so it's BYOB. Bring your own bud, bring your own booze. <laughs> Y'all, all we ask is that you uh, act like an adult. <laughs> Great. You know, it's just like being at your own house almost. I mean, it's a fair price from people and in bulk to make your money over a period of time. But this is the same as buying any commodity. So what is the, the market want an average, you know, size pipe for? Not Nothing too elaborate. We're not talking about bongs. Yeah. We're talking about handheld yeah. pipes. Yeah, a little spoon, a little colors. What are people wanting to pay? Five to a hundred dollars. <laughs> okay. It's a varying range based on... None of our prices in our store are out of whack with any other store in Colorado. Do you go around and check? How do you, how do you judge that? I wouldn't say I go around and check, but... I've shopped enough in Denver. Yeah, I do shops. do shopping. I live here. I shop... At, at uh, stores, there are things that I need that they might have. And I Before I owned this store, when I was 
when I was buying glass as just a consumer, there was a price range that I can afford. You know, in a, in a pipe to sell uh, four inches of glass for 15 or $20 easy, you know what I mean? Or $6. I mean, there, most people don't want to spend more than $100 at a time on a piece of glass. You know, I'm not just giving people free pot just so they can come in and destroy my space and disrespect my, my merchandise and my customers. I'm doing it because I'm be trying to get people to know who we are and what we're about. You can grow your own weed here at below like market value because you're growing it and you're only paying for the small things it takes to cultivate it. You, you can see the plants when you come in the store, when you're standing at the counter, they're right in front of you and behind the glass. The garden club members are the ones that give the marijuana away to the customers, not me. They pay for their space for their plants and then whatever marijuana they don't use, they, they give away. It's pretty simple. Kind of like paying it forward more than anything. If you want to learn to grow pot, you can get a book, you can buy chemicals, you can buy the growing medium, you know, um, if you want smoking accessories, there's always places to go. We just want to be places that you want to go, you know, nice. and that, that you like going because where it's at, who we are, the products we offer, the gifts, it's not about like making money. We don't care more about the dollar than the customer. Cool, man. You know, I was just, I was just remembering it was show number six and this one will come out as show 26. So it was exactly 20 shows ago when we sat down for the first time. There you have it, Mike P from Four Strains coming back for a second sit down. Tell us all about the new upgrades and the running operations of Four Strains right across from Bronco Stadium. I know that's not the official name, but that's how I always think of it. But go down there, check them out. Tell them you heard them here on the Cannabis Community Project. Let them know because we're a community. We're here to support each other. We're here to give each other support, ideas, and every bit of of energy we can to make sure that our industry thrives. So if you liked what you heard and you think you have a similar story, maybe you have a business or a business idea or just some thoughts in general that need to be spoken out and preached out to the community, contact me right here. I want to hear from you. I want to talk about these issues on air. I want people to be highly engaged in what's happening with growing technology, innovation, food, legal issues, health issues, even the music scene. I want it all to be here because that's what a community is about. Yeah, we focus on business, but a community is more than just business. It's about people. Very good. Enough of that. Let's move on to Twin News this week in news. Last week, we didn't really do Twin News. We did a single story about Adam Carolla being sued, heading up the campaign to raise money, legal fees actually, to fight the patent trolls. That's what we talked about last week. Very interesting. If you didn't hear it, you're going to want to go back and listen to that one. This week, we just have our average old Twin News where we go around, we find out what everybody else has already reported on, and we try to snatch it up just to a split second before you can get to it on your social media. So this is the only place you need to go if you want to hear social media regurgitated news about cannabis. Because that's what I'm doing. I'm regurgitating cannabis news. Finding the Facebook and the Reddits and the Twitter. And uh, even even a couple of off-sites here and there that you might not have heard of. But finding all the topics. I even have my Google News feed automatically keyworded to all things cannabis. And I pick through them. Find a couple interesting stories and good ones. Consolidate them. And then deliver them back to you pretty much like I'm reporting it myself. We're short on time this week because we have a great interview with the mad scientist. So let's just quickly do a few stores and try to keep it under five. Here we go. Twin news this week in news. Here we go. First up, right on the top, Marijuana Policy Project 
posting a very, uh, very beautiful shot taken, I assume, today or yesterday of President Obama and our very own Governor Hickenlooper in a bar somewhere, cheersing each other with full beers. Colorado Governor Hickenlooper says it sends the wrong message to young people when adults use marijuana. Yet he sees no problem pounding beers with President Barack Obama under the spotlight of the national media. Even the president has acknowledged that marijuana is less harmful than alcohol. Why is Governor Hickenlooper so opposed to the idea of adults making the safer choice? What message is he sending? Hmm, think about that. Hey, be careful what you post on YouTube. Here's a story posted by United Cannabis Workers sharing a link about a man getting busted for growing marijuana and posting it on YouTube. We've heard many stories of people posting Facebook, other social media. And of course, if you're going to do a video and you're going to show what there is to show and you're going to give all your identifying information, you're publicly showing what you're doing think about it folks all right don't be stoners all the time just when it's time to be a stoner you understand science versus the politics cannabis law reform clear posting politics of weed in new york and beyond as we gear up for our celebration of new york becoming yet another state to legalize medical marijuana as the new cure for both economics and health, it's now going to come down to science versus politics. And I would just like to say, for those of you who do not clearly understand the science, please stay out of the argument, even when you think you're trying to help. I was listening to somebody the other day, rather famous, who I support and love, but just very confused about the idea of how cannabis affects the body and how it works, what recreational and what medical are all about. And I find it personally offensive when people lump medical into recreational and then mock rec mock medical as if it's some type of disguise that we're really using to get to recreational. Make no mistake about it. Medical led the way and paved the path for recreational, but these are two very different roads. Medical exists, and when you mock and make fun of people who are truly suffering, many dying, and finding relief in their choice of of what they put in their body to make them feel better in their states of pain, to mock that and play it off as stoners just looking to get high is offensive. Not just offensive to the truly sick, but offensive to the rest of us who live in a society of halfway intelligent people that can figure out when something is harmful or not, and can also figure it out when something is truly helpful. Helping others, And just because something is helping others doesn't mean it can't be fun to consume in a recreational way. And just because you're consuming it in a recreational way doesn't mean it's still not a medicine that's helping people. Don't forget that. Hey, customers are lining up for pot shops in Washington, another state, the second state to go full recreational. They followed us right on our heels with the uh, legalization in 2000, whatever, a few years back in the election. And now they're implementing it right after us on our heels once again to the recreational side. I'm sure if they come here and they find our experts and they see what we're doing, they should have no problems at all. Filmmakers give away free marijuana to promote documentary. Cannabis law reform posting again another way that Adam Hartle and Anthony Hashem hand out legal quantities of drugs to raise money for their movie documentary. Well, here we go. It's not very innovative in the sense of original or creative, but it's ballsy and it's innovative in the sense of saying, I'm going to actually do something that everybody thought about for the longest of time, but we're going to actually do it and raise some money. And of course, it'll be successful. That was posted also by theguardian.com. You can read up on that. Marijuanadoctors.com, just reinforcing the idea I was just touching on. Medical cannabis opponents claim that there is no medical benefit. However, when it effectively treats the severe seizure disorder, when traditional paramedics failed, what more evidence do you need? Some of you may have seen this, the video going around of the epileptic children seizuring, twitching, twerking, not to make light of, in the sense of body convulsions happening and it's heartbreak. And then to see cannabis applied, cannabis oil in most cases, and almost instantly, within seconds to minutes, body coming to full recovery relaxing and back to normal again and yet leaves no side effects or harmful after effects who's the animal those who use cannabis or those who oppose it 
You decide. That's all the news you need to know this week. And that was Twin News, This Week in News, your weekly source for up-to-date cannabis business. Hey, you want to hear something cool that happened the other day because of my podcast? So I was listening to one of my podcasts the other day, the Adam Carolla Show, and Jay Moore was on. You know Jay Moore, sports talk, uh, many movies, Jerry Maguire, TV shows, been around for 20-some years, very funny guy. Well, he was on and saying he was coming through Boulder and had a few extra tickets that he was looking to push through. So me, being the one always looking out for opportunities, sent him an email thinking, well, what can it hurt? I mean, somebody's got to answer these emails. So I sent him an email saying, I got a small podcast maybe some demographics that might be right up his alley and if you could send me a ticket or two uh, i would promote it on the show and i would be thoroughly grateful what did he do he personally sent me an email back no more than 10 15 minutes later saying he had 10 tickets for me that i could use to personally promote and give away on my show to those i wanted so i want to extend that offer to all of you listening right now All you have to do is contact me. Send me an email. Send me a Facebook post. Send me a message. It doesn't matter how you get it to me. Send me smoke signals. But if you want to go see Jay Moore on July 29th in Boulder, Colorado at the E-Town Comedy Theater, contact me. We got more to come. Well, there you have it. Because of my podcast, little by little working up in the world, getting closer to where I want to be. Hi, this is True Diligence, PI, proud sponsor. If you're looking for a job in the cannabis industry, you know how fierce the competition is. Think of the character you'll demonstrate by showcasing your credentials at the beginning of the hiring process. A simple yet affordable way to show employers you're the clear choice. Visit our website at truediligencepi.com. Move your resume to the top. Asylum. These psychopathic tendencies tend to get the best of me. I've been exuberant since I was in the uterus. Malignant like a tumor is service in hysterectomies. Scalp me, please, for surgery. I cut precise as I murder beats. Why act humanized while humans lie? I'd rather protrude your mind and crucify these crucial lies. Uh, independent forever That's the vedetta, better bring Berettas I'm acting reckless, call the paramedics You should die if you're diabetic And you could die if you feel neglected Cause in my city, gotta earn your stripes to feel respected I'm next up, investing in and trying to buy Colorado That's the motto where I'm from Every day yelling out, hey co On the top of my lungs ah. yeah. Everything in excess Living life luxurious, killing it, I'm notorious I'm I think I need a flu shot It's me against the world Feeling like I'm too I'm cut too yeah. I get in where I fit in M-H-T-S-X-X Be the quick I'm bitch too yeah. What you feel? And I'm too authentic And it may be cold But my heart's soul in it Since the war on drugs began in the Richard Nixon administration, it's no secret that the DEA and the FDA mostly approve studies to prove the harms of cannabis and suppress pro-cannabis information. What is the ulterior motive? Follow the money. The money is generated by marijuana being illegal. Illegal. So who profits from over 850,000 people being arrested each year from cannabis? The United States imprisons the most amount of people around the world for drug-related crimes. And this source is coming straight from the DOG, Department of Justice, and the International Center for Prison Studies. China, number two, Russia, and then a whole slew of countries you would imagine. We have all had our lives touched, one way or another, by the prohibition of drugs, and specifically the prohibition of cannabis. How would your life be different if you had been arrested for any one of any time you had done something that might have been illegal, like consuming marijuana? Would your life be better off for being incarcerated in prison? And people say, well, how could it be profitable spending the millions of dollars on the courts and the police and so forth? Yeah, there's money being spent there. But that money comes from the public, taxes. And then 
private industry steps in and extracts money directly from those involved in the system. And because they're in the system, they can't complain. Who are you going to complain to? You're a convicted misdemeanor, a convicted felon, a vic convicted whatever for drug uses. Who are you going to complain to? Who's sympathetic to your story that you're being oppressed, suppressed, depressed by the system, which is obsessed with drugs and the drugs you're consuming, but they don't really care about you or the drugs or society. It's a business. They care about the profit. So why the taxpayers pay for the courts and the police, and they all get employed and get their cuts, budgets go up, Oversight is enhanced, more people are employed, more equipment has to be ordered, more overtime, bigger positions, more positions, higher pay raises, promotions, more bust. And on the other end, millions and millions of individuals directly paying for their private probation, directly paying their jails and prisons for the amount of time they stay, directly paying for everything that is involved in the system that used to be also funded by taxpayer Money. So now it's privately being funded. And when they can't pay, they're in bankruptcy, but they can't file bankruptcy, which means their life goes bankrupt. And then they go back to court because now you're not in a civil case of not paying debt. Yeah, debtor's prison doesn't exist. Haha, <laughs> yeah, we know, right? But when you don't pay debt against the state, now all of a sudden it's a different story. This isn't Jane Smith and, and John Doe in a dispute trying to get money from one another and the court giving a judgment and telling you you're on your own to collect. The court is its own judge and collector. So they pass the sentence, which puts you in a place that costs you the money, whether you're out and about, either way you're paying. If they send you to jail, you'll pay directly for your stay. If they send you back out on probation, parole, you'll pay privately for your probation, for your ankle bracelets, for your weekly class for your tests, your exams, your UAs, your court fees. And then when you can't pay, they'll put you back in jail and they'll go back up. It's almost the equivalent of a teenager with a credit card. They just don't quite get it. And they get trapped in the world, the world that never lets them out. And then you're in the system forever. But now, because you can't pay and it's a business, it gets to be written off as an expense or a loss and still recuperated its cost. But you don't leave the system, so you're still in the system. So the system exponentially grows which means budgets have to be expanded because prices have to go up because more people have to be served because the corporation, it's feeding itself like it was built and designed to do. This is why prisons should be fully tax funded and we should feel the pain of every dollar being spent, which forces us to get involved and see what's going on. When the money is swept under the carpet and millions are racked up in jail cells as matrix style money bags, meat bags, that are being extracted money not from the individual but from the existence of the individual because the individual can't pay we already established they're poor that's how they got in jail in the first place they didn't have enough money to afford legal representation which would have surely most likely got them free so now because you're trapped in the system and you're locked in the system you can't get out of the system and you're forever in there your existence is what makes money so it's one private organization asking the state of taxpayers to pay them to serve to support this individual that can't pay for themselves but he's really stuck with the bill to pay for himself and that is what locks him into slavery because he can never get out of his debt he can never get out of the prison so he's eternally locked into the system so he stays inside and he works for 50 cents a day pounding out whatever telemarketing or minimum wage job has been offshored insured incarcerated to our slavery population of, of prisoners or you work on the outside and you can't get a job beyond barely minimum wage if even that Either or, you're a slave. That is the result of the war on drugs. That's what we're fighting against. That's what it means when you casually pass over cannabis for weed and stoners and potheads and those who are looking just to puff, puff, pass and get high. That's the offense of the weight of the world that you bring on this issue with such comments. That's what we're talking about with the mad scientist whose life was affected. And by the way, we did the interview back down at Four Strains Smoking Lounge, Hookah Lounge. And if you remember Mike also, whose life Life was affected and career and life directed. My life and how I got to this point was touched by that. And I bet yours was too if you're listening to this. Or you know somebody very close who's what. So remember, this isn't just a battle to get high. This is the highest battle of highest crimes, of highest morals. Fighting to the top of the food chain in both intelligence and morality. I think I need a flu shot. It's me against the world. Feeling like I'm too cross. Yeah. I get in where I fit in. M H T S X X. Be the quick bitch. Yeah. I love this.
the fiber there. I didn't bring any of it with me, but yeah. Cotton balls. <laughs> That's the basis of everything, right? I guess. I mean, do you, do you take that? I don't know much off, about textile. You and, take that cotton off the plant, right? And that becomes your shirt, right? So if you can get this, you can get everything. I might have to write in a few days. So you want to tell us who you are? Like we know you're mad scientist. M mad scientist is what I go by. We go by um, first name Adam. I'm with a new company called Nine Fiber, and what we do is we are a cellulose extraction company. And we take plant cellulose and uh, make it usable for fiber or paper. And uh, particularly right now, we are interested in uh, taking the marijuana plant waste, which is the uh, stock, the dried stock, and converting that cellulose material, eliminating all the THC, and making it usable paper and usable textile material. Cool. We're doing research on that right now. This is pretty exciting, actually. When I, when I saw you post it the other day on Facebook, I, I immediately thought, oh, finally, somebody's actually not talking about starting a dispensary or or something that's very specific plant-based for retail somebody's actually going into the other side of it the the part that we're all kind of waiting for this big hemp industry that people are talking about it's taking off sure but you're you're making a fine distinction between what you're doing and the hemp industry that that potentially is going to merge out there or you feel we like we want to take advantage of an abundance of cellulose waste we have the technology and the capability of taking this which is considered to be trash in uh, in the industry. And I'll explain why the difference between the marijuana stock and the hemp stock. And we're taking this trash and recycling out the THC and making it usable paper. Let's just say for right now paper because we haven't perfected the uh, the thread yet. Mm -hmm. um, but in the process of perfecting the thread, we'll, we're making many, many grades of very, very high quality vintage paper and prototypes of what could be used for industrial toilet paper or tissue. No, we're going to we're gonna have to step back a few steps because there's already a couple things we just touched on that I'm already confused on and I'm sure other people are. You're saying specifically cellulose waste so we're going to have to explain what that means okay. and then maybe help us understand what the traditional or current process of making paper is so sure. people can kind of understand sure. when it comes to threads and textiles and paper what's currently being done and how it's being used so we can understand where the cellulose waste comes sure. in. So I'll, I'll go ahead and try to answer all those questions uh, with a paragraph or so, maybe a little bit more than that. <laughs> cellulose itself, we don't want to consider it waste because cellulose is very valuable. So it's only waste because the industry, the, the marijuana industry, hasn't had a usable application for the stock that they're throwing away. So I'm actually referring to it as cellulose waste. But to actually say that cellulose is waste is really, that would kind of defeat the purpose. The cellulose is very valuable. And the point I'm making is, is that cellulose Cellulose itself is very valuable, and what we're doing with it is we're wasting it, and we need to be able to use this cellulose for many different things. And, and let me explain to you exactly what cellulose and, and the industries that are using it for and why we're using it, what we're using it for. We'll start with wood. Wood, obviously, trees, paper, wood. We all know that this comes from trees. And this is uh, pulpous cellulose. Cellulose, they take the wood into sawdust, basically, and then the sawdust, which is what's left over from making uh, many different types of wood products. That sawdust is then basically what becomes paper. Um, they actually grow trees for the purpose of making this paper and toilet paper. And it's very, very pollutive to the air because they don't have to ingest them, so they can really go all out with the pesticides and really, really pollute the earth really bad. Um, it's an industry, of course. The paper industry pays from the chemical companies to get the chemicals. They're all oil people. So they take the wood and they make uh, products from what you may see in your ice cream, cellulose or lipstick or anything like that. All this is cellulose. They void it of any characteristics of where it came from. And on a microscopic level, it's just cellulose. So it can come from many different areas. Uh, for cotton, um, there's cotton cellulose, of course. It's basically degraded to the point where it's liquid. Mm. So that that can be that's one type of cellulose would be if it's in liquid form. And there's also fibrous cellulose, which we know for cotton or flax or you know what hemp is what they make clothes with. And these are the strings of fiber that are on the green part that surrounds the outside of the plant versus the inside of the plant. Any anybody's ever cut a rose knows that the inside's kind of like a corky hollow type thing and mush, that, mushy yeah. kind of. Oh, mushy and, and and that's known as the herd and and the marijuana or the cannabis plant
plant, and I'll, I'll get into that too. The cannabis plant has a herd and has the outer layer, which is the uh, the fiber or the bast, what they call it. Okay. And when it comes to cotton, they also the cotton industry uses more water than any other plant that's grown, and more pesticides than any other plant that's grown. And most people have no idea that most all of our cotton and all of our clothes is genetically modified. I'm not mentioning any names of who's doing it, but it's genetically modified and to sustain the pesticides that are used and it's very environmentally unsafe and I believe that if everybody knew this and knew that we had an alternative that doesn't involve any additional water, doesn't involve any pesticides, is already grown organically in a laboratory environment and we're throwing away what we could be using right now. No more of your clothes made in China. We have the technology right now, 20 plus states, 365 days a year operation, and they're throwing this part away, and my company can turn it into paper and turn it into clothing. Okay. So let me recap that. So you're taking on the two industries of wood and paper and cotton and textile for making fabrics and making paper-like material. I wouldn't say that we're taking on anybody. I think what we're doing is we're offering the world an alternative to what is happening right now. You know, it's not my choice. I'm one person on this planet as everybody else is. So it's not my choice to say, if you want to support that we chop down, we grow and chop down trees at whatever cost it takes so we can continue to dispose of paper, write on it, throw it away, or use it as toilet paper or blow our noses in it and throw it away and just grow another tree and loot the air by growing it because of all the chemicals involved or or just take trees that exist you know for hundreds of years and we'll cut those down and just keep blowing our noses or whatever but we need those to breathe and if we don't stop and take a serious look at what's going on with the environment it's going to be too late and it's not about writing down paper or using toilet paper that is on the market right now but it doesn't even make sense why even grow a tree to use it for paper it's actually has one of the poorest cellulose contents, and that's what it's based on, to make this product with. The only reason is is because there was an abundance of trees, an abundance of people who needed jobs, an abundance of machines to cut the trees, an abundance of people who had the oil to process the chemicals to bleach the stuff and so forth, and they created an industry. Hundreds of years later, we look back and we need that air. Economics, you're saying that's just pure economics. E- economics, and- but but now we look back at it and see the, the, the environmental disaster that it's caused, and it's too late because they have so much money that they can literally strong arm someone with a great idea didn't get their great inventions to the market because the people didn't know about it or the people weren't behind it but i would tend to believe that everybody in the world would say that if we could take something that we can recycle that's already being grown whether you like marijuana or whether you don't it doesn't really matter they're throwing away the cellulose and it can be used instead of trees i think it's pretty obvious i (laughs) don't think it's it's... like the tesla story right (laughs) it's it's we now know and retrospect Absolutely. that there was better technology, better ideas that We existed. shouldn't be paying for electricity, people. Everybody right. who knows who Nikolai Tesla is, this is exactly the same thing. Speaking yeah. of, a little off track, but did you see the news report about Russia? They discovered in the woods out of Moscow a Tesla tower I that did. they're planning on, on I did. bringing uh, back to life. And, and, and I want the people to really understand that everybody who hears this and everyone who hears this can share it to their friends and let them know. If you're tired of having to spend your tax dollars for politicians that keep coming up with these bullshit reasons on how we have to pay for environmental protection agencies that really aren't doing anything and we all know it after BP and all the other crap that's going on in the world and you want an alternative it's time to stand up right now you're you can make a difference right I agree and and I like the angle it seems like your company and your your idea is very strongly economically socially and politically based rather than just purely here's a business that can make some money it almost brings us back to the the class the social entrepreneurship class of right. finding the multiple bottom lines and the the multiple end objectives so I, I think you're you're definitely in the new economy with that type of thinking I mean you know let, let me I want to go back and, and kind of recap the difference between the hemp stock and the marijuana stock and, and I want everybody to understand hemp stocks are well there's a couple of different types of hemp stocks there's different genetics like there are different strains of marijuana but for the bulk of the two different types of classes of hemp stocks you'd have seed hemp stocks which are mainly grown for their seed which we use for oil and you know protein and so forth. And then there's the uh, industrial hemp stock, which is very tall, which we use for fiber or hempcrete or the composites and so forth that you know of. Common technology has been around since the early 
late 1900s to decorticate hemp. And that word decorticate means remove the outside from the inside or take the fiber from the herd. And you can do that, was done in China for many, many years by hand. They would just take a little knife and slice one of the things and then pull a long sheet of however long the hemp was. And then it would have to, you know, soak in water. And it's, it's a little bit of a process, but it gave us some very, very strong, high quality fibers, fibers that we all know were used in World War II, hemp for victory. Um, if you didn't know it, we had a big campaign and all of our military's clothes and robes and all that was made of hemp. And it was very environmental and it was very strong. And a lot of people don't know that the first Levi's jeans were made of hemp. They were made of the hemp sales actually from the Navy. So, you know, the, the hemp is a really long history. And so you wonder why hemp it hasn't been used. It's not very difficult. It's very simple. It's very economical. It's very ecological. It's because of these other companies. It's because of these other industries. They, they, they have power and the power, they don't want competition. And hemp was made illegal as long as marijuana for the, all the same reasons. Marijuana would affect the uh, pharmaceutical industry and uh, hemp would affect the paper and the textile industry. And well, guess what? Hemp seeds also could be used for nutrition and they could also be used for fuel. So with this one plant, all these other people that are raping the environment, polluting the air, stealing money from you, and we aren't doing anything about it. And now we have a chance to, we can actually do something about it. Absolutely. It sounds like a great idea. Is there other people that are involved in this industry or are you at the first into the market? No, I, I haven't. I've, I've done the research that I can mm-hmm. to find out. Um, as far as I know, uh, we are the first people to be able to eliminate all the THC from marijuana and make it into usable paper and usable textiles. We have the material. We're getting the thread this week. It shouldn't be very nice. long, but before we can put any products on the market, before we can sell anything, we have to change the legislation in the state of Colorado, which is actually the only state that's regulating the marijuana waste. It's being referred to as waste right now, so I'll use that term. But the marijuana Only because there's not an actual use for it after its first initial use. Right, which okay. Is why it's being called waste. Exactly. Let me let me let me key up on that real quick cuz I'm just going to wrap up the whole thing about the hemp. So that's how hemp was so easily to be used and hemp has very low THC and it can be used industrial and it's not very hard to process with decortication machines which were made in the early 1900s. The common misconception is is that hemp and marijuana are the same or that that hemp is the male marijuana plant. These are misconceptions. This is absolutely false. They are all cannabis plants. Cannabis has different subcultures. One of the categories is hemp, and then there are other subcategories. Sativa is a, is a subcategory itself. So you have sativa hemp, sativa sativa, which is the marijuana sativa, sativa indica, which is the marijuana indica, sativa rutilaris, which is also a marijuana plant, and actually... That's the short stubby one the from short, Afghanistan? No, actually that's the indica. The short, it's more grows in very colder areas in Russia and stuff like that. It's not, it's more like a schwag marijuana. It doesn't really have a lot of high THC, but it, it does have more THC than hemp. And they're probably going to be reclassifying Kush as a, as a separate category also. But for right now, there's three genealogies of marijuana, or four genealogies of cannabis, three of them being marijuana, one of them being hemp. I mean, alcohol, beer even has its relationship to cannabis, hops. Right. Uh, you know, the hops comes from the cannabis family. For sure. non-beer makers out there, it's the thing that makes your beer, I guess, more, it takes the sweetness away and it balances out the, the flavor of the beer. It's a certain process of brewing. So even beer drinkers are connected to cannabis. Right. <laughs> cannabis, Cannabis. a lot of people don't know this. It's. It goes back to religious. I mean, this is one of the first, hemp was one of the first clothings we'd use. And and let me let me clarify why uh, there's no marijuana clothing or no marijuana paper. Marijuana is grown. It has a lot of uh, they call inner nodes or what you would call branches. Let's say and the branches they start to grow when the when the marijuana cutting or the seed grows into the clone st- size, whether it's from seed or whether it's from a cutting. So you start to see these branches off, and these branches end up in the vegetation state determine the size and the the, the diameter of the stalk and the size of the plant, and whether it's sativa will be grow taller and a little bit the leaves are thinner and these are what they um, refer to as the characteristics of the plant or the phenotypes mm-hmm. and these phenotypes um, they they define the structure of the growing and of the plant and, and all of it and everything from the, the ratio of the cannabinoids and the THC CBD ratios and all the other things that are in marijuana to even the structure of the fiber and the difference between marijuana and hemp is I would say that uh, hemp is known as the bast fiber which is the which is the plant that you can extract 
fact, it's fiber for the stringy fiber. This is the tall stalk, the tall, stock, the tall thin right. stalk yeah. that can be grown in close clumps sure. together. Sure, okay. and you can take those tall stalks that don't really have branches until the very tip of them, and they, and they can you know be used. The stringy fibers that are in that outer part can be used for clothing or paper. Marijuana with its branches, you can't put it through a machine. I've looked for because ye- it'll get clogged up. It, it'll or- just yeah, it'll ri- it'll actually it, it takes the the branches and it rips them and it rips the pieces uh. to shreds so that you end up getting a box of uh, of a uh, herd or the core in parts that would be chipped off like wood attached uh, to the fiber okay. so you wouldn't be able to use the fiber we don't use any machines we use an environmentally safe process is oxygen and water it's intellectual property right now and we we aren't at liberty to discuss the, the process, mainly because we can't sell anything because we don't have a license to sell it or a license to so be able to collect why it. why not? Because there's probably people who are confused if right. you're not selling bud, you're not right. selling medical, recreational, anything. You're not even selling paraphernalia. No. Please explain briefly why. You know, um, Colorado is the innovator with when it comes to the regulations with the seed to sale and i, I gotta commend them they've done really well I, I was from california before and i was a, a grower over there and california i thought was going to be the first to do this but they weren't colorado was and, and i think that colorado came quickly with a way to dispose of this waste and, and that's really commendable because we really do have to consider that this has to be keeping out of the dumpsters and it has to be keeping away from the public to be able to use this in in a way to possibly extract some of the THC that's on the uh, on, on the outer layer. And um, those regulations were put in play very well to regulate a policy that when the dispensaries are finished with their trimming the marijuana off the stock, that stock then has to be disposed of by one of the approved methods from the Marijuana Enforcement Division. The Marijuana Enforcement Division basically interprets the legislation that's been passed down by, you know, the people, which obviously have the lawmakers write the law. They're interpreting the They're regulation, interpreting the, regulation. Of, of, yeah. uh, the law. And the regulation states that this is waste. And because they haven't found a way to really use it other than composting it and there is another way. I have another way, and you can get on my website, and you can support us. We're www9 the number nine fiber f i b e r dot com, and send us messages and like us on Facebook, and start spreading this to everybody you know, so we can get legislation which would regulate the marijuana stock because it has THC and not make exceptions to the disposing of it without regards to the fact that it has THC. And just to hit that point so people know specifically what they're in support of, what they're supporting is for the aftermatter, the aftermath matter of an already used plant. Right, a recycling method. To just continue to be used for another purpose instead of being disposed as trash. It's just to allow that quote-unquote waste to be used into another product yes neither of which have any psychoactive compounds to them Mm -hmm. of the marijuana which we're thinking of which was the distinction you were making that hemp exists on its own male and female the smokable thc and the smokable uh, product a flower exists male and female also right so when people talk about not having males next to females they're not talking about having hemp next to marijuana they're talking about just the male and female of their own species of their own species right Um, male male hemp plants have very low thc Female, female hemp plants have low THC. Mar- that that seems to be one of the deciphering factors is the psychoactive labeled psychoactive tetrahydrocannabinol. Mm-hmm. Right. And um, what we do is we recycle out the tetrahydrocannabinol, which then makes the stock which they're throwing away usable just as hemp. And you do this by a proprietary process. It's a proprietary process. It's environmentally safe. And no the, chemicals, no toxins. Ke- no chemicals or toxins at all. Harm to person no harm. or earth. No. The byproduct is oxygen, which is good for the environment, and water, which is good for our waste supply. It can be used on any fiber. We can do this on cotton right now. But we're choosing to specifically apply this technology to recycle. And by the way, I just want you to understand, hemp is already known as the most superior organic fiber on the earth. The problem is, is that the cotton industry has so much money that they suppress the production of hemp. But we have far more abundant supply of cellulose that's identical to hemp and a lot of aspects actually superior because of it being grown in conditions laboratory-like or with all the nutrients to make the THC superior. So we have actually superior fiber, and because of the law 
of Colorado. We have to throw this superior fiber, superior, the most superior fiber. We have to throw it away by law. And I'm asking you to to call your senators, call your congressmen, call your call your best friends and tell them to do the same thing too. And let everybody know, Colorado can be the first state and the first place in the world where we can take marijuana stocks that are dried and they're throwing them away and you can wear it soon and you can use it as paper very soon. They change the regulations. I can start selling it. Until they do, we're in the research and development stage. We're accepting donations. Your donations would be helping us to secure legal and everything else that we need to be able to make How this How are a you accepting donations? Are you doing a crowdfunding site uh, just through the website? Right uh, now through, we're trying to have an initial buzz. Remember, we <laughs> let you, we're speaking because this just happened. Okay. So everybody knows that. Uh, so if they go be, to your website go to our website you find can, a donate button you can find a donate button we're hooked up through paypal right now hey, listen guys guys women children everybody out there like because we're, we're not promoting marijuana we're actually promoting a, an environmentally beneficial way to recycle something that exists right now as trash and make it into a superior product that is on the shelf a higher quality paper softer paper than you can get from the people that do it with wood and better quality fiber than the people that do it from cotton right here without any pollutants, without any additional growing, no additional water, none of that. Support us, like us, share us, call people, call, make legislation pass. This is a ground roots effort. We're not selling out. We want to know that the people are behind us. This technology is very superior to what exists right now in the current applications for these things, with whether it's wood or technology. So there's offers of, 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 you know, sell this, sell that, let us know what this is. We're not doing it. Nine Fiber is for the people. We exist for you. We want to know that you care. If you want this world to be a better place and you are tired of the people that have money dictating the environment and then you having to spend your tax dollars to clean up the mess that they make because of their lies, support us. Even a dollar from each person and a million likes gets us the money and the, the legislation, the lobbyist, and the support that we need to make this a reality. And then no more made in China. You can feel proud of yourself when you buy your clothes. No more cutting down trees for toilet paper because you know that this came from something that was already being grown and we can use this and I will Produce toilet paper. If you support me, I will undercut everybody and I will put toilet paper on the shelf that is superior for less if you can support us. Thank you. I, I like that, the, uh, the toilet, toilet paper campaign. You know, it just it just doesn't make sense. And I'll tell you, I had this idea a long time ago. And it's it was not kind a of shitty funny. idea. It's not. And it, but it, you know what it is? What we're doing to ourselves? We failed as a human race because we somehow let someone decide as an intelligent race, we let someone say that we believe you're more intelligent than us and you should lead us with the idea that we should suffocate while we defecate. Wow. We think should, about we, it. We should have a rant off. We should. I, I th I think because, I mean, if we The first person I've met has come close to my ranting abilities. <laughs> so. I'm sure this is going to be the first of many. We have a lot of questions that are going to be coming up. But. Who yeah, who inspired you for this idea? Are you, are you the sole inspirator? Yeah, I'd, I would really like to say that, but I think that uh, I would really have to say that Bob Marley. Really, Bob Marley inspired me for this, and I think that everybody should take some time. I have nothing against the music that plays today. I listen to it also, but I think everyone should take a little bit of time in their day, and not just hear the music, but listen to what he's saying, because. People, we can do something about our planet. We can take the responsibility. And, you know, it's not just a dream. If it was your dream, it's a reality now. We can do this together. Very good. You're, you're the second person in two weeks on the show who's referenced Bob Marley as one of their inspirations and, and uh, models for, for how they're conducting their, their life dreams. That's a... Uh, <laughs> I mean, anytime you get a good idea, you're like one in a thousand. Anytime you can execute that idea, take action on it, you're like one in a million. And anytime you can get any success from that action, you're like one in a billion. 
So well, there's one more to add to that too. <laughs> if you can, if you can make that one in a billion and rise through oppression, and we'll talk about that at another show, maybe. Oppre- your oppression, my oppression, the, and how I got to even be in Colorado. Uh, of that, how that, that says, contributed to this to this kind of business idea, or just your overall path in life and your your aspirations. I think, I think um, my path in life, how I got here, and what led me to to really 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 believe in but when you say this. oppression that implies a systematic or, or large right. scale uh something against you that's right or were you oppressed by the government by the man no. uh, um what was the the say system? it's 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 anybody who can i would say the word oppression would have to be anybody who can overcome or triumph through something that was holding them back um i We'll say that I have been a product, not victim, of the failed policy on uh, marijuana prohibition. And you were the victim of, or the product of. I don't believe in the word victim, okay. so I can say that I was a contributing member to the failed approach to marijuana prohibition. Only marijuana prohibition. So. Yeah, yeah, it's illegal struggles. So, yeah, and it's a, it's 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 quite an interesting story because uh, I can I can sit here and tell you from from one aspect of it, but I really believe that uh, in the, in this industry that we helping right. really come to light what, what what this industry stands for. There's there's a side of this that the victims are, are, are people, their houses, lives, financials being th- thrown apart and being put in s- incarcerated systems, um, which thrive off of their you know their existence and being there right. and they don't belong there people should not be incarcerated for the possession of a plant well i think there is some strong backlash to the private private prison industry lately there's more and more kind of a global consciousness and in news and media coming about because the private prisoners industry is one in the same as or it's very much connected to to the war on drugs it and is and I, and I can firsthand tell you from myself being in a private prison in Colorado that it, it definitely does because of of some type of drug infraction probably I assume was possession of marijuana okay just that so there's nothing else nothing attached else. To it. so no violence no violence no uh, no weapon no no money, no money, no Columbia money, and, and no, no, no. <laughs> Traveling with a travel amount, this is still a crime. It's still a crime. So you can have a prescription for morphine and be in whatever, Vicodin from the pharmacy, even, oh, excuse me, even Marinol, which is the Schedule 3 drug, synthetic THC. Schedule mm-hmm. 3, synthetic THC. Real THC for marijuana, Schedule 1. This is ludicrous. So this is the hypocrisy in the pharmaceutical companies. As well, you I think that in itself is the proof, as they say, the proof in the pudding, whatever that means. But I think that's the proof because the system is that a doctor from the system, accredited by the system, trained and educated by the system, can give you drugs. But anyone outside of that system makes it a crime. So I think that qualifies for the oppression that well, you it's, it, it, and, and let's, throwing let's, out there. Absolutely. And let's go even one step further. I, I want to key up on one major hypocrisy that I don't know why. So but the, the medicine itself is being suppressed. And the knowledge about the benefits of the medicine are being suppressed itself. For example, I mean, it's okay for the pharmaceutical companies to synthetically in a laboratory make the drug that they claim is the psychoactive drug. But they can make it and they can sell it to you by prescription, Schedule 3. It's actually less controlled than morphine or oxycodone. And you can get that and travel all over the country because technically, if it's a prescription drug, that means THC has a medicinal value. Do what, you think it's pure, just cold-hearted economics? Or absolutely. Or do you think there's this more let's, sinister? Let's, there, there's, there's, there, it's, it's, it's sinister and it's economics because of two things. They admitted and they made it into a drug that THC has a medical value. But at the same time, the federal government and the DEA schedules marijuana as a Schedule 1 drug drugs saying it has no medical value. So what has no medical value? The THC? The THC, as they say, has no medical value. Well, if that's true, then how can you make it into a prescription pharmaceutical drug that's Schedule 3 and claim it has a medical value? Okay, first off, they messed up altogether. The medical value is from the CBD, not the THC, which is actually CBD is legal in every state. So you can get a CBD a vapor pen made of hemp or whatever from a com- some companies, but you can't use THC. Do you it think that was sense. ignorance at the time of writing the law, ignorance of law lawmakers not 
being truly educated no, about No. No. They've known they've known that they've known the studies for a long time. It really has to do with the exact same thing that we're asking you to support us for. Medical marijuana finally got overturned in California in 1996 because the people knew that it worked and they were tired of listening to the lies of the people that had the money telling everyone that medicine has to come from their chemicals which end up killing you and giving you side effects and you've all seen the commercials on TV. You take right. a drug for one thing, it's got 20 side effects that you're supposed to live with. Look, if you can grow your own medicine in your own home, you don't need some quack with a coat telling you to take some stuff that's going to fry your liver or your kidneys, why wouldn't you? They know that we're tired of it and we're fed up with it. If you're fed up with that, I'm sure you're fed up with the people polluting the air. I'm sure you're fed up with all these other big corporations. Then we can have one finally for the people, by the people, supported by the people. And if you support me, I will never sell out. You get very impassioned in this. Do you consider your company to be a, a social activist company in addition to <clears throat> developing and innovating and eventually selling product? At the moment, we really can't even make any more claims other than research and development because of the legislation. I myself, as an individual, can say that I am very passionate about everything that I speak about. So I guess right now you're more of an activist company than a, a retail company. No. Our company is a research and development company. Okay. I, as an individual, am an activist. And I happen to be a part of the company. How, how long have you been a active in the, the sense? Are you I would say birth? Or? I, would, I, would, I would have to say that I always felt that it was wrong that some person who was no bigger than me from the moment of conception, had the right to tell me that something I was doing that didn't harm anybody could put me in prison. What age did you start smoking or using I tried marijuana for the first time at 13, okay. as a lot of pretty, pretty much average, kids do. Yeah. And I didn't use it again. Uh, I've, I've been in health and nutrition. I've, I've studied nutrition. Um, I've been the mad scientist in bodybuilding circles since uh, <laughs> 1990. I've, I've Where, actually, what is the name all about? Or mad scientist. I was 17 years old in the Northern Virginia area, and I started working as a, a, a teenage amateur bodybuilder and started beating a lot of the adults and the pros, the people in my gym that were professionals at coaching other people as you know, far as getting their contest prep ready and came up with some formulas and started training some people and uh, got very famous in uh, some of the major publications, Flex. Formulas and like nutrition enhancing type formulas? No, or? structured ways of eating. No, uh, okay. A lot of people know that, you know, of course. Lifestyle the formulas. Lifestyle formulas that we, we call it the window system because I would manipulate the carbohydrates that you eat to create wind, uh, into sorry, windows of uh, opportunity for insulin. Uh -huh. And if you can manipulate the body's insulin to work to your advantage, it creates these anabolic windows to where you can time periods of uh, amino acid uptake to make the muscles grow. So wow. the choreographed workouts specifically uh, designed for this with a nutrition background and, and programming it all at, at perfect timings, we were able to really come up with, I mean, I was able to come up with the athletes that I helped were able to produce these uh, cutting edge results. Uh, seven people from my area turned pro. It, no one in my area had turned pro before that. So this was kind of, you know, they wanted to know what was going on. It was very interesting and a lot of fun for a while. You know, I, I always loved the human body. And uh, one of the reasons why I got into uh, botany or uh, horticulturalism was because of the relationship that we have with plants. And right. one thing that a lot of people don't know, but marijuana and the human body have a very symbiotic relationship all the way to our heat signature if you if you hmm. look at a big field of marijuana plants under you know like with the, the helicopters they see they see the heat signature what looks like a lot of people at a concert wow so, so we the have plants the, themselves are just the marijuana plant and us energy. we have the same heat signatures yeah wow. that's something something wild and, and also the endocannabinoid system is the largest system in the entire body this plant was made for us and it seems that it's money and greed that if people tell us that it's not so they can keep it from us and tell us that they have something that they say is made for us when this was made for us here whether you believe in Big Bang or the spirit, whatever, it's <laughs> here. It didn't come from their Petri dishes and their petroleum. So that was your former career or your current career? Or? For, former career passion, and it's always been one of my uh, loves as far as life goes, understanding the human body and being able to take it to its fullest threshold. So when, where, and how did you transition then into the, the botany and cannabis and horticulture? When, when did that life change happen? I was in political consulting for a little while. 
Okay. And uh, I did um, quite a few things with Indian Gaming and uh, a major political consultant that I worked for. I don't want to mention his name. Okay. And uh, as a result of working with uh, this individual and really getting it inside of what I felt wasn't what I agreed with, what was going on with the world. And um, started off when I was in Northern Virginia. He was in outside of D.C. And we, we, we did some stuff in New York and Miami and in, and in California. And um, after that, I, I, I really wanted... I had after suffered the loss of my stepfather, suffered the loss of my grandmother, suffered the loss of a, of a close uh, friend of mine, and uh, really started to decide in my life I kind of wanted to understand more about my relationship with the earth and, and, and my own existence. And um, it seems like when your energy is, is in a way, it, it finds the people that are like-minded. Like, for example, we, we've known each other for a long time. We've known each other. We've, we've been friends for a long time, but we've had our own path. And it was destined that we would link up again because our paths were, you know, aligned. I had to go do my thing. You did so your thing, and we came a together. Believer you know? in the, the yeah. whole uh, destiny and future is, and you're just following the path that's there for you, and the, the, well, it was meant you know, to be kind of thing. The, I can't. I can't. I don't know if it's if it's meant to be or if it's not, but. I do know that this has been something I've been wanting to do for a long time, and it's been made possible. So I do believe myself that if you want something and if you believe in it bad enough, I think that belief might actually not come from us. That that energy or that idea, because like, for example, we, we know like you can put electrodes on the head. You can say, okay, this guy thought this, and, and this is what happened mm -hmm. after he thought that. But where did that thought come from? It doesn't, right. you know, like you, that's one thing we don't know yet. So my thing is, is it, is, is it that this whatever, I, I thought this, and now, now it seems that I'm being brought to like-minded people that are going to make this happen? Because that's what's happening. So I believe in it. Well, it's a, <laughs> it's a little bit of the secret, right? A little yeah. bit of a little bit of the secret. That it. was very good. I saw that. Uh, but it, I think at the bottom, I, I also believe in the idea that it's kind of out of our hands and out of control to a big part. I mean, when I think about what I'm doing now in this industry, the only reason I could do this is because of past failures that gave me the opportunity to explore this route. In this route is really what I wanted to do, what I want to do. Wasn't quite sure how to do it until extreme forces made me do it, like failures and past opportunities being blocked and jobs being lost, which finally allowed me to say, well, yeah, maybe I'll just start a podcast about that. You know, it's funny you say that, too, because I, when I, and, and again, we can talk about this, but I was incarcerated in 2008 here in Denver, Colorado for possession of marijuana. And when I was released, I wanted to be in the industry and I couldn't because Colorado has it regulated that if you're in the marijuana industry, if you're selling, I guess, marijuana, THC marijuana, the psychoactive part, the part that's controlled, then you, uh, you, you have to follow under the regulations and those regulations are you can never have been convicted of a felony conviction. So um, as I was meeting people in the, in the industry and, and trying to find work, which again, doesn't make any sense why you would take a man for possession of a plant and make it so he can't get a job, make it so he can't get an apartment, ruin his life, and then say you're on your own. It, this is what leads to the, the decay of moral fiber in society and people believing that police are not here to protect us and these laws are made for the benefit of corporations and not individuals. Well, it's that vicious cycle, right, of... You don't want to give a man a job because he's a criminal. Well, if you don't give him a job, then he's going to go back to being a criminal. <laughs> Which is, again, why we said it and you said yeah. this is what you wanted to do. And this is what I wanted to do, so I have to create my own job. Right. You said I thought, I thought so far outside the box that there's, there's no rules to the box that I'm in. Yeah. <clears throat> That's what the industry needs to be. I mean, whether we're talking about cannabis or hemp or whatever – I think a change in culture and attitude needs to be just that, that people need to start empowering themselves to say, I don't need to go find a job. I need to decide what job I'm going to create yeah. and then go out there and build that job. Right? I am job. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Am job. Right. And you, you put a little chip in you and, yeah. you know, whatever the future may bring. <laughs> I think it's that self-discovery, right? I mean, right. how long did it take in life to finally come to terms with what you're eventually going to do? So I had to fail at my own mm. businesses four or five times. You know, I had to go take minimum wage jobs to make ends meet in the meantime. I had to do all those setbacks and failures 
so life could force me into doing something that I wanted to do, but couldn't couldn't quite get it together to and, figure and, it out. And you know, I have to say this, <laughs> and a lot of people really don't realize this. You know, there's there's different types of people in the world, and and, and I'm, I'm you know everybody has his own purpose. Personalities is great. You know, I love them all. As far as um getting the chance to be able to do what I wanted to do, what I what I'm coming to do right now. I'm going to have to thank prison for that. And I, and it's really hard. It's really hard to say that it really is hard to say something like that, but there is a, there is a type of personality that's going to take the best at whatever they're in. Tate, if, if I can't change the world, then my mind might be able to. And then one day when I get out, I want to make it happen. And, and I believe that we're at that point right now yeah. where we can really say, you know, we really can change the world. And we want to know that the people are behind us, not just for the highest quality fiber or the highest quality paper. That it is. I can assure you of that. But it's it's also because of what we can do as a human race. I mean, not, the product is there to make ends meet and pay the bills and provide the people with a tangible good good that they can claim to be part of the community but it's the idea that they're really part of it's and that. it's what you're supporting if you're you're supporting an environmentally friendly process that's recycling out the thc we're getting rid of the drugs and we're making this as industrial as hemp now if you support hemp or if you support anything you know environmentally friendly then you should naturally gravitate towards this type of philosophy spread it to your colleagues your friends or your, your family and let them know that with your support we we actually could have an alternative from growing trees to cut them down or polluting the air with the chemicals that we do for these, you know, for cotton production or so forth. It's not necessary. There is an alternative and we really could see a difference and everybody could be wearing nine fiber soon and we didn't have to do all the unnecessary chemicals and pollutants to make it. Absolutely. Let's uh, give your website one more time and your Facebook and any other contacts so people know how to get involved in your community and your project and stay in touch. Touch. Okay. It's um, www. the number nine fiber f i b e r. dot com, and there's a link on there for Facebook. It's uh, nine fiber and Facebook. And um, like we said, we're we're asking for everybody to reach in and, and support us. A dollar and a share, you know, it really makes a big difference. You know, a cup of coffee, just spare one cup of coffee a month and support us. It's not only for the environment, but it's an alternative and it's something that's sustainable that humanity can benefit from. And we can stop acting in a way that's destructive and start acting in a way that is productive. There's jobs that we can bring to America. China doesn't have to own the textile industry for the world. The United States used to be the leaders. There are tw over 1,200 shutdown factories in North Carolina. There's enough supply that we can bring all this back to the United States. And it's about time that we did for jobs, for your future, for your clothes that you wear on back, and for our environment as a whole. Very good. All right, man. I think we got it. <laughs> I think we got it. Thank Let's you. I look that. forward to seeing you again. Thanks for listening to this week's show. Make sure to come back next week. We're going to have more guests lined up speaking with dispensary owners, growers, business owners. Make sure to follow us on all of the social media, Facebook, Kush Common, Google+. You can listen to our shows live from the website or your preferred listening platform. Find us on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Spreaker, even YouTube, all under the same name, CannabisCommunityProject.com. We'll see you next week. Oh, oh.